Okay. I have got a visual aid, as my Anglican colleagues would say. We have a visual aid. My visual aid is this, one of my favorite cups. This cup, or this mug, was given to me on the occasion of our baptism. Catherine and I were baptized on the same day. Um, as it happens, uh, uh, again, but that's a different conversation. Okay, and my parents thought that this would be jolly nice as a little commemorative mug for the occasion. I'm going to show it on the screen. Will it show there? There we go. You see what it is? It is, of course, a Land Rover. And uh, this is back in 1996, and it was the start of my Land Rover mug collection. Does that sound awfully sad? <laughs> Far too many of you are nodding your heads at this point, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, I'll tell you something even sadder while we're on that one, well, down this particular rabbit hole. Um, on the Land Rover forum on Facebook, is that even sadder? It's still nodding there, okay. When we had a Let's Show Us Your Land Rover mug collection, I had more than anyone else. And I trumped the lot because I've got a Land Rover teapot as well. How about that? Okay, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I think my street cred, such as what was left of it, has now completely left the building and gone somewhere else. Okay, I saw Daniel Acott earlier on. Is he around? There he is. Just to let you know, I also have model Land Rover collection and a model bus collection. Okay, and the pride of my model bus collection is a London bus with opening doors, little thing goes ping. I don't know you were coming this morning and I brought it. There we go. Uh, however, so there we go. Completely no street cred left. How about that? That's how we like it. There's nowhere left to fall. Okay. But I was brought this mug by my parents. And for all this time, I had pride of place in my Land Rover mug collection. Thank you, you can stop laughing at me now. And, but what I, I tell you what, this is how observant I am. This is how observant I am. It's only in preparing for this morning, I saw what was going on in the rest of the month. It's a shepherd. It's a shepherd, isn't it? A shepherd doing the thing. It is a shepherd out in the wilds um, in a blizzard looking after his sheep, when actually normal people would be killed up with their slippers on in front of the fire watching Ski Sunday. Yeah? But the shepherd is out there in somewhat more than discomfort, and that's just driving a Land Rover. He's out there in somewhat more than discomfort, and he's really putting himself out to look after the sheep. He is freezing cold, but the sheep need to be cared for. And so when we come to this particular psalm, we get an understanding that a shepherd is someone who puts themselves out, puts themselves prospectively into danger. A number of years ago, in fact, it was on our honeymoon, Catherine and I were in the Lake District, and we saw a chap working his sheepdog. Right, okay, street cred all gone, who recognises this theme tune to a TV show. Ready? It was actually in tune. Okay, it was one man and his dog. Okay, and so during my childhood, Sunday afternoons in the summer were one man and his dog, which was televised sheepdog trials with Phil Drabble, with the famous points going, points going, no, no, points going there, okay? And in the, on Sunday afternoons in the winter whiskey Sunday. And sheepdog trials and watching sheepdogs at work as we do when we're on honeymoon is just an amazing thing. There, there's this whistle and suddenly the dog appears and the sheep appear. And, and then the dog runs around. And, and even for a northerner, I'm not quite sure what gone by last thing. But the dog does. And the sheep do their thing. The sheep come through the gates and they go into the back of the trailer and the dog just sits there and says, done it. But that's not how shepherds work in the Middle East. And it's certainly not how shepherds worked in first century Palestine uh, when Jesus was around and referred to himself as a good shepherd. And it definitely wasn't how shepherds worked in the time when David was writing this psalm 
maybe six, seven hundred years before Jesus. You see, even today, in the Middle East, shepherds go in front of their flocks. They lead them and they call them. They don't need a dog to bully the sheep. They walk in front of the sh 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 sheep and they call. They go, ay, 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 ay. And she come by them. And the sheep recognize their shepherd and the shepherd will count the sheep. Don't need a dog, might have a dog, but the dog isn't there to terrify the sheep into doing what he tells them. The sheep follow the shepherd. And that's the image of a shepherd. Obviously, just like the one on the mug, the shepherd goes out the way, goes into areas of peril, goes into areas of discomfort to look after a sheep. But in Palestine, in the Middle East, shepherds lead their sheep and the sheep follow them. So what we learn from this psalm in the first instance is that we have a shepherd. We have someone who leads us, will call us, and we can follow them and trust them to lead them, to lead us. And we can follow them, we can recognize them, they recognize us, and we can trust them and follow them. Not just any person who is our shepherd, not just any person who's going to go out of their way to look after us, even when it's snowing, even when they'd rather be curled up in front of a fire watching Ski Sunday. It's God himself. And now I'm going to mess with your heads. Because Clive has set us this homework, <laughs> I hope you've already started learning this psalm. And whatever form works for you, word by word. And yes, there will be tests. And this morning's test is what are the opening words to Psalm 23? Let's have someone. Opening words, Psalm 23, let's have you. At them, over there. No, you're pointing at, you're pointing, no, you're either volunteer, you're either volunteer, or you, you don't point at someone else. Are you pointing at your wife? <laughs> You can sort that out afterwards, I'm sure. Okay, however, anyone want to volunteer to give me the opening words of Psalm 23? Me! Come on, out you come. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? No, right from the beginning, over there. Anyone else? Ooh! <laughs> We will have the words. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, Gladys, you've already done the homework. Hey, well done, Gloria. She said a whole lot. Unfortunately, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. The opening words to Lord's my shepherd are not my Lord's my shepherd. How about that? You're looking at me like I'm daft. Well, that's true, but. Not, on, not for that sort of reason. Okay, first one out here with the Bible. That's embarrassing, isn't it? For those of you watching on Zoom, here we are in a church full of people, not one's got a Bible. Way, here we go. I didn't hear what you said, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. What's it say? One. <laughs> <laughs> says the lord is my shepherd oh, it doesn't says the lord it doesn't say the lord is my shepherd right let me in fact i'll use a big one over here bigger print but actually right okay thank you for that okay for those of you who turned up the church today without bibles your phone counts if you have a Bible app on your phone, if you have an Android phone, my sword Bible is a very good one. Lots of different translations and things on there. If you have an iPhone, why? <laughs> However, so now I hope this camera is going to pick up what I'm going to show you. The opening words to Lord my Shepherd. You can just see, let me see if I get that right. Can you just see that the Lord is 
yours in capital letters. Okay, now, being a bloke, I don't often read the instructions to stuff, but sometimes it's good to read the instructions for a Bible. When you get a Bible, worthwhile, if you can't sleep, reading the translator's notes at the front, because it tells you what they have done. It will send you to sleep. Okay, because throughout the Old Testament, in most versions of the Bible, in most, in most translations of the Bible, you'll often see you open any page in the Old Testament, apart from the book of Esther, because that doesn't mention God at all. Fun fact. Okay, any page in the Old Testament, you'll pretty well see the Lord in small capital letters like that. And that's the, the printer's way of telling you he's got it wrong deliberately wrong okay another test for you who remembers the ten commandments for those who watch on zoom everyone's looking at their shoelaces okay something about not taking the lord's name in vain remember that one ah that our jewish brothers and sisters have very very keen not to take the lord's name in vain now often you go down the street you hear the lord's name taken in vain quite a lot don't you yeah. Okay, that, and that's what that commandment means. But actually, throughout the Old, the, the Old Testament, God's actual name appears on every single page, right from when he gave his name to Moses. In Hebrew, something like Yahweh, which is the full extent of my Hebrew, and those of you who speak Hebrew will go, you don't even speak that. But it's four letters, and we sort of use... The, the, the vowel sounds to make it Yahweh, and that is God's actual name. So when you have the Jehovah's Witnesses come around, you can tell them Jehovah's not a real name, and that will mess with their heads too. And, and I get a sort of perverse pleasure from messing with their heads, but there we go. It is God's actual name, but in deference to our Jewish brothers and sisters, we don't print it in our Bibles. If a Jewish person is reading it in Hebrew, they'll get to the name Yahweh and they'll say, Adonai, Lord. They will avoid saying the name even when it's printed on the page. And in deference to their practice, that's why our Bibles put Lord in little capital letters to say, actually, this is God's proper name, but we're not going to print it. Why does that matter? It matters a lot. It matters a lot because it changes entirely what this psalm says to us in a happy way. All right, old job, new job. Remember, come out of the Navy chaplain. My rank, such as it was, wasn't an executive rank. I wasn't a lieutenant, I wasn't a captain, I wasn't an admiral, although there are chaplains who think there are. Okay, I can talk to anyone at, at the same level and use their first name. So I happen to know someone who's a rear admiral now, who I knew for a long time when he was a captain, back in my first job in South in Fast Lane. And so I go into a meeting with him, and everyone else is going, sir, 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 this, and I'll go, hello, Richard. Which is probably a mistake, because his name's Paul, but there we go. <laughs> but it makes a difference, not having to salute and call him sir. Because I can say, to, I have a different relationship, not a command relationship, but a pastoral relationship, a caring relationship. And that's the difference. To use someone's name is a privilege, but also it implies a close relationship. So every so often I say to Catherine, she doesn't have to call me sir. Now, this psalm sounds different. The God who calls me by name and lets me call him by name is my shepherd. Not sir is my shepherd, but Yahweh. The God who lets me call him by name. What a tremendous privilege that is is my shepherd not sir but god who wants to have a loving relationship with me god who calls me by name and i respond in name wants to be my shepherd 
And that makes this such a beautiful, intimate, loving psalm. I will trust you because you have shown your love to me and you let me respond with your name. That's what this psalm's about. That's what this psalm's about. And then there's the, the bits later on. I won't go through them all now. I'm looking at the time now. I know there's lunch ready later on, so hey, have you prepare a table for me and present my enemies to me. My cup overflows. The rest of the psalm is about being blessed. My cup overflows. Now, you know that when you go around someone's house and you sit down at dinner and they get the wine out. And they, they come around to you and they go, say when. Not just say when. Fill the bottom thing up. Just say when, you know. Don't be stingy. Get that in there. Say when, which actually means I don't want to spend money on expensive wine on you. There's no say when. There's no say when with God, is there? My cup runs over. When God blesses, he blesses. No one has ever come to me and said, well, I had a, like a five out of ten blessing from God today. Next week, I'm expecting a six out of ten blessing from God. God blesses. When God blesses, God blesses. Let's run through a bit of the Bible. I mean, obviously not all of it because some of us want lunch. But one or two obvious cases of God showering his blessing on people more than they can handle. Remember the Israelites in the desert. Didn't they half moan? They moaned and they moaned and they moaned. And when they got bread from heaven, just landed on them every single morning. That's not good enough, is it? Where's the meat? Remember that? Where's the meat? And so Moses goes to God and goes, uh, God, where's the meat? And God says, all right, you're going to have roast quail tomorrow for dinner. And the following morning, they were swimming in these birds, weren't they? They were swimming in quail in the camp. Let's come right to the other parts of the Bible, the New Testament. Jesus' first miracle recorded in John, the wedding at Cana. Cana itself, a one-horse town, and the horse left. And it's one of the few biblical places, locations, that archaeologists can't find. It was so insignificant, there is no trace of it left. But when Jesus goes there and turns water into wine, you go back into that packet, passage, you look and see exactly how much wine Jesus produced. I tell you what, that small village of three and a half people, they weren't partying for the rest of the night. They weren't partying for the rest of the week. They were partying for the rest of the month with the amount of wine that Jesus was able to produce for them. It probably explains why there's nothing left of the village. So this psalm, we know it so well, come to it with fresh eyes. Come to it with fresh eyes. The God who calls us by name, lets us respond by name. In a loving relationship, not Sir Yahweh, by name is my shepherd. He is the one who turns out in times of peril, in times of discomfort, and ultimately, of course, when we know to the cross, he will turn out and minister to our needs. And when he does so, he blesses more than we can handle.